the shooting range. In this episode, at last, the first monoplane fighter by Reggiani in the Italian aviation tree and the story of its creation. New update brings new graphics. We take a closer look at all the visual changes in the game. Hotline. The developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with The Challenger. The new British top and how to play it. Seven Seven Advancing Storm is released to every player. There are loads of new features and tech, and in the next couple of episodes of the shooting range, we'll be discussing all these changes. First to be reviewed is the newest English top tank and true leader of the Royal Armoured Corps, otherwise known as Challenger One. It's your usual MBT of the Cold War time. Inside, we find four crew members, the L11A5 weapon with five types of ammo, and an engine of up to 1200 horsepower. Plus, the coolest feature of this tank, composite armor. The machine is protected with a whole sandwich of safe things. From an NERA type reactive armor, and to layers of cast and rolled homogeneous armor. This one is really tough. Its turret can survive kinetic shells piercing up to 470 millimeters and explosive ones up to 750 millimeters. The upper glassy plate can withstand shells going through 400 and 600 millimeters respectively. So basically, while you're facing your enemy, you're good. Your weak spots in this position are the sides and this driver hatch. Oh, and the lower glacy plate. It seems like the engineers had saved some money on its production. Okay, now what about the dynamics of this tank? After all, 1200 horsepower is quite a number. And it proves to be good. Off-road, you'll be achieving 38 to 44 kph. Yeah, it's not a Formula One car, but it surely is a very good result for a 62-ton monster. Reverse is quite fine as well, 25 to 30 kph, enough to get yourself to safety after you take a shot. Speaking of shooting, the best ammo for you here is the L23A1 cracking open 437 millimeters of armor from 100 meters. This number looks all the more attractive when combined with a less than 7 seconds reload rate and turret rotation speed of 31 degrees per second. Elevation angles are also quite adequate, from minus 10 to plus 20 degrees. So, how do you play it? First, you have to deal with the fact that you won't be the first one to arrive at the capture point. Second, remember that despite the good protection, this tank has enough weak spots for your enemies to shoot at. You can engage into close combat, but make sure you don't show your sides and lower glassy plate to your opponents. On the other hand, this tank is great for ambushes, especially among some hills that provide good cover for all the weak spots and give you the opportunity to comfortably use your turret. Take a key position on the way to a capture point or somewhere along a popular route Stick your turret out and wait for the targets to show up. You won't leave anybody without a 120mm present. And if things get hot, you can always use some smokes and, so to say, filet à l'anglaise, and then return and burn everybody to the ground. So now, let's talk about the importance of learning on the mistakes of others. In 1936, Regia Aeronautica launched a competition for the new planes. The requirements were quite rough. 
One had to create a monoplane fighter with an engine taken from the CR-42 biplane and within the same budget. At the time, only two aircraft designers dared to enter the competition, Giuseppe Gabrielli with his G-50 and Mario Castoldi, who introduced the MC-200 Seita. Two years later, the military announced another competition and the limitations were a lot milder this time. Now, the engineers could use any Italian engine, and the cost wasn't even mentioned in the terms of reference. Fiat and Marci simply refined the same two aircraft from the competition of 1936, but others used the opportunity to create some brand new and amazing things. All of them were outshone by the Reggiani RE2000. Roberto Longhi and Antonio Alessi created the fastest fighter of them all, with an incredible climbing rate, a perfect elliptic wing, and a flight range one and a half times further than the Seita, created by the great and wise Castaldi. But the real shock came when the military command witnessed the maneuverability of this bird. In a horizontal flight, the RE-2000 outmaneuvered the CR-42, a ruddy biplane. It could bank a steep turn right from a dive, an exit as easy as one, two, three. The plane had an incredibly durable wing with as much as five longerons inside, and it could survive amazing overloads. Not every pilot could survive those, but the price for this performance was incredibly high. The thing was, that Roberto Longhi had been working in the USA for a long time, helping create the Seversky P-35 fighter, and almost every technical solution for the RE-2000 he took exactly from this aircraft, almost without any changes. That's why the planes from Reggiani and from Seversky looked like two brothers. The only distinctive thing was the chassis of the Italian aircraft taken from the American Curtis P-36. The problem was, the floors of the two planes were also the same. And like its older brother, the RE-2000 didn't get into service. How do you use so many Longerons? Exactly. You take something out. In this case, Longhi and Alessi had to use integral fuel tanks, meaning that the wing covering also served as a tank wall. But the thing was, from an engineer's perspective, a rivet is basically a joint. And after the very first flight, rivets and cover plates on any plane get a little bit loose, creating small holes. As a result, the RE-2000 could do all those amazing things we've said, <laughs> but only once. After they landed and refueled, the fuel started vaporizing, leaking and even streaming away from the wing. Seeing the situation, General Francesco Pricolo, soon to be commander-in-chief of Regia Aeronautica, said sarcastically that they wouldn't accept soldiers with enuresis into the army, not to mention an aircraft with the same problem. This plane was simply dangerous to pilot. It could be set on fire by any incendiary bullet, even if it was just flying by. Longhi and Alessi made a lot of constructional changes, but the G-50 and the MC-200 still remained the main fighters of Regia Aeronautica. A silver lining came from abroad. This aircraft became popular in Hungary, Sweden and even in Britain, where they hoped to keep Mussolini out of the recently started war in Europe by purchasing Italian planes. As for the Italian generals, they remembered this aircraft only when they needed a long-range fighter to fly above North Africa. Even then, the RE-2000 didn't make it to mass production. But its creators drew some lessons from their mistakes and started developing a new version of this fighter, designed for the new German Daimler-Benz 601. But it was a whole different aircraft. In Update 1.77, Advancing Storm, we've seriously changed the way the game looks. Let's talk about these changes. Update 1.77 
At first, everything seems to look the same. Except for maybe better anti-aliasing. Where's the miracle in that, right? But seconds pass, and you begin to see the work of the new graphics engine at its finest. First, you realize that the landscape on the tank battlefields is kind of new. The surface looks more real, sharp, and, well, tridimensional. And not only on plain ground. Just look at this pavement. Beautiful, right? Also, when fighting in a complicated weather situation, for example, in the rain, forget about the enemy for a second and take a look at how water now interacts with this world. Streams of water now flow down and across the solid surfaces, like roofs, walls, and that same pavement. And raindrops now leave ripples on puddles and water surfaces. And we're not even mentioning the fog. Some locations are simply breathtaking in the morning haze. We've also reworked the lighting system. Now, we've got a global illumination technology that works around surfaces and objects on the maps. The shadows have also got more realistic with two new features. Shadows on effects and contact shadows. First ones are quite self-explanatory. And as for the second feature, you can check how it works with, for example, grass. Overall, the picture now looks a lot more believable, and we hope you'll enjoy it. We have some extra presents for the pilots as well, and those are dynamic clouds and sun. The latter now moves across the sky from east to west, and all of that is of course according to the place and time of a given mission. The clouds are also ever-changing and overall not stuck in the middle of the sky without moving. There are numerous other changes released in this update. For example, along with the new landscape technologies, the suspensions on tanks and other ground tech now react more naturally to uneven roads. What did you like the most about the new update? We're waiting for your reactions in the comments. Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline, developers answering questions from the comments. The first question was asked by a user called Marco Arilio Imperatore. Will you ever add the possibility to turn the tank engines off and on? First off, what an honor to see you here, Your Imperial Majesty. Second, we considered the possibility, but there are a lot of factors to account for. Like the fact that some vehicles had electric turret drives, but many used hydraulic ones. Ergo, they would behave differently with their engines off, etc. etc. It's basically a whole new piece of gameplay mechanics. With all the things on our plate right now, we do not plan to implement this feature anytime soon. Please, <laughs> do not sentence us to death or anything. A player called OFW Schrödinger writes, We always hear stories about Allied or Soviet pilots or tankers. Can we hear something about the Axis pilots or tankers? Hey mate, we actually had quite a few pages of history about Japanese and German soldiers and we don't intend to stop. There were many remarkable people on both sides of the conflict, that's for sure. Dan Diablo JSY says, My four-year War Thunder account got banned for discussing selling accounts. Thanks, Sagaijin. Ever heard of joking around? Hi. Two things. First, when it comes to any kind of illegal activities, we take it very, very, very seriously. Second, if you are really blameless, don't hesitate to take this matter to our support. We are sure that we will sort it out. And the last, very serious message was sent by a player called Jack Hug. I have to say that technically women and men can't fly by their own. We'll have to disagree. They actually can, just not for very long. That's it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on The Shooting Range.